When the morning beat has you feeling out of sync, Quick Trip has just what you need to get back in the groove. Like a free, fresh brewed coffee or ice cold Big Q with breakfast. Because nothing beats those morning blues like the sweet sound of free. Just purchase grab and go breakfast at Quick Trip right now and grab a coffee or Big Q on us. So wake up with Quick Trip and never miss a beat. QT. More than a gas station. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, Yins, we get five weekends this month, and the CityCast team is here to help you make the most of every second in your city. We've got stuff to do, places to go, and yummy bites to eat, plus a few milestones to celebrate. You guessed it, it's your guide to March in Pittsburgh. It's Wednesday, February 28th. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I'm with podcast producer Sophia Lowe. Hey, Megan. Hi. And newsletter editor Francesca DeBecco. Hello. Hey, Yins. Uh, so here on the show, if you are new to CityCast Pittsburgh, uh, we always try to hit on the news that the city's talking about, but also find all of y'all the best ways to experience what the city has to offer. Yeah, and these monthly guides have made me a lot more intentional in thinking about how I want to explore Pittsburgh, and it's been great for helping me plan ahead a little bit. Agreed. I am always plugging events in the Hey Pittsburgh newsletter. I see so many cool things to do, so I love being able to bring that to you guys on the podcast. Yeah, the newsletter has so many fun things to do, and I always fill up my weekends with uh, stuff Francesca recommends, so highly, highly recommend subscribing to that as well. Aw, thanks, Sophia. <laughs> uh, and if you have been enjoying our monthly guides, um, we've been doing them all this year. Time is really flying. Right. Any of the news that we bring you every day, uh, we hope that you'll consider becoming a member of CityCast Pittsburgh. Yeah, I've said it so many times. One of the perks is ad-free listening. And to me, that's such a great little bonus. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to support us and our work, you can go to membership.citycast.fm. So I have an announcement. I am out of hibernation season. So <laughs> yes. yes. So uh, for March, I need more ideas on things I should be doing. So what are all of you looking forward to this month? Ooh. I mean, this month for me is the exciting conclusion of birthday season. Oh, Happy yay. birthday. Happy birthday, Thank Megan. you. Uh, birthday season for me personally, because I am a Pisces and it all has to be about me, is between <laughs> Mardi Gras and St. Patrick's Day. So you never know when it starts. It's like really varies. It can be a little accordion, uh, but you always have a hard end date. So it's fun. It's right in the middle. And my partner's birthday is during it, too. So we really extend the days. That's I perfect. love that. How are you planning on celebrating like or how are you wrapping up your celebrations? Well, the biggest way uh, to celebrate for me personally, uh, it's always a free gift uh, to me from the universe. Uh, it <laughs> always falls around my birthday every year is daylight savings. Oh, begins. Yeah. Uh, we all get an extra hour of daylight. I am so ready to have sunshine after like 536 p.m. It's going to be great. This is funny because you're always talking about being a night owl. I am, but I, that's why I'm never going to experience the daylight in the early hours left to my own devices. I want that extra hour in the evening to bask in the sunshine, you know, when we get it. Yeah, that's totally fair. I'm excited for that as well. Francesca, what are you looking forward to Um Besides Megan's birthday season, obviously. <laughs> yes, yes. Everyone celebrates my birthday. We will, yes. Uh, one thing I'm really excited about is the opening of an exhibit at the Heinz History Center that will feature the Women's Press Club here in Pittsburgh. Um, it's called A Woman's Place, How Women Shaped Pittsburgh. I've been deep in planning some programming. Um, if you don't know, I'm the president of the club. Woo -woo. Um, yeah. So uh, even before this exhibit, I've always been excited to support women in journalism locally here. Um, our club is the second oldest women's press club in the nation. So we have a rich history. There's going to be some incredible stuff uh, in that exhibit. So I'm really excited. 
One of my favorite fun facts about Francesca is every year she talks about dressing up as Nellie Bly for Halloween. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it this year. Maybe. <laughs> it would be the year. Um, she was an amazing investigative journalist and is probably best known for making a trip around the world in 72 days. Anyway, the exhibit opens March 23rd, and it will take you on an interactive journey through Western PA women's history from the early 1800s to modern day. It's going to be so cool. Yeah, and I know we've shouted out the Heinz History Center a lot and talked about it in previous monthly guides. I think they're such a good resource. We can't help it. Yeah, we're fans. <laughs> no, that's so fair. Um, and I think last month in February, we mentioned it was nominated for Best History Museum in the U.S. And this was part of a USA Today's Reader's Choice Awards. Uh, I have an update to that. We won first place. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shout out to Go Sophia Heinz for Center. following up on that. I completely <laughs> forgot. Um, and the Children's Museum was number two in the Children's Museum category. Oh, so another great. museum to check out if you have kids. Yes. And the museum is always a good indoor activity. As we're recording this, it's really coming down. It's pouring outside. You might Thunder, hear a little lightning. It's, yeah. it's pretty intense. <laughs> but since it's about to be March, the weather should be getting nicer. Mm-hmm. Punxsutawney Phil said it was going to be spring. We got to believe. <laughs> I mean, spring comes with a lot of rain, unfortunately. So <laughs> a little bit you- of sun. That's what I'm hoping for. Yes. And if you want to get outside, um, our team is kind of obsessed with this. You should try mushroom foraging. Uh, Learning about fungi in our area is so fun. Um, According to Penn State's College of Agriculture Sciences, early spring is when mushrooming starts here. Yeah. um, Actually, before uh, Mary Lee joined the team, um, before she was our executive producer, we did this hike with the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy um, where they showed us a bunch of mushrooms. We didn't actually, I think we found what, maybe one or two, but it was a really nice day and we got to walk through the woods and that part was cool. That's fun. Ooh, me and Francesca went to a mushroom foraging 101 kind of thing a couple weeks ago with the PA Mushroom Company. Uh, If you're interested in following any of their events on Instagram, they're at PA Mushroom Company. Um, But I guess that means the four of us need to go mushrooming now. Yeah, I love that we kind of did the same thing, but separate. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how y'all took it, but I actually found it a little intimidating because I feel like the bulk of the recommendations were very like, here are all the ways you can die. (laughs) Here are the couple of ways that you could get a tasty snack. (laughs) Well, if you don't want to go out looking for mushrooms alone, we have another (laughs) group, the Western PA Mushroom Club. And on March 12th, they're meeting at the Frick Environmental Center. And this event looks like a great introduction to learning about fungi in our region. I'm really excited for spring and summer. We're so close. (laughs) Also coming up uh, is the spring equinox, another gift from the universe to get yourself all sorted for the season. Yes. What do you usually do for the spring equinox? Like I've never celebrated, so I don't know how people usually mark the occasion. I mean, I like to treat the equinox um, like other people treat New Year's Eve, kind of. I love that. It's like an opportunity for renewal. Spring is here. The daffodils are usually starting to bloom. Um, I saw some in my neighborhood, actually. Um, And there's this this whisper of summer warmth back in the air. Um, Also, uh, slight aside, but I cannot wait to see all of the Yinzer dads out there in their convertibles (laughs) or their open air Jeeps, in their sweaters and their shorts when it's like 51 degrees outside. This is like a sacred season for those people. Megan, you might see me in that same outfit. I support sweater and shorts if it's nice enough out. I mean, I am still firmly a millennial in that my favorite outfit is Nike shorts and Ugg boots. So like if you see me, maybe you don't. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> it is a great season. Um, I love your approach to it. I There's no reason why we should be setting new intentions in the depths of the dark winter. We should be doing it whenever it is. I just can't. I can't manifest the energy, you know? Like the holidays are like, it's a lot, and then I need time to reset. Yeah, exactly. Um, And spring equinox is a great time to start planning your garden. If you want some help, you can join Grow Pittsburgh on the spring equinox for organic gardening basics for community gardens. So specifically, this will help people in communities who want to do a shared space. It's $10 and it's all virtual, so you can attend from anywhere. Um, It's from 6 to 7 p.m. They'll talk about soil health, pests and diseases, garden planning, tips for watering and weeding. So all the stuff you need to know about having a communal crop space. 
Yeah, and the spring equinox is Tuesday, March 19th. Uh, I've also got another tip for getting plans. Obviously, so many great stores around the city, but the FIPS is also a great place to go for native plants. Um, they sell little plugs that you can just put outside. I did this last year, and there's like 16-ish plants to choose from. You place your order online. Um, those orders are open until March 24th. Um, you don't pick up the plants until May, though, so that's kind of nice that you have a little surprise a couple months down the line. I feel like I should know this through context clues, but Sophia, what's a plug? Um, it's like this little soil guy with the plant in it. Is it um, like, <laughs> is it already got a sprout of some Yeah, kind? like it's got like a little sprout. I feel like I'm not doing a great job of describing it. I'm just sort of gesturing. <laughs> <laughs> we, but, we get it. <laughs> yeah, it's like. There's a small plant going. Okay. Uh, like smaller than your fist, perhaps? I mean, we yeah. have small hands, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mine was, I think. Well, how did they do? Did they, did they survive? Good. I mean, they're still pretty small. I think they'll get bigger, like, over the years. They haven't popped up again this year yet. I think it's still probably too chilly for them. Um, we got native plants because we figured since, you know, they're meant to be in Pennsylvania, we would not have to do a ton of care for them. Yeah, Fair yeah. enough. I feel like I'm just starting to see, like, the bulb plants, for example, like tulips and buttercups. Like, yeah. they're just starting to make themselves known. And for anyone who's also starting to plant their garden or set up their yard with new shrubs or any other fun plants for the spring, uh, we chatted with an expert who has some tips on how to take care of these plants because Pittsburgh is actually getting a little warmer. So uh, you can find that episode on our website. Or in our show notes. We'll put it there, too. Yes, we'll link it for you. Um, and if you're not a big gardener, you know, you still want to see bright and beautiful flowers. I know that Phipps Spring Flower Show starts on March 16th and it runs for four weeks. So that's another thing to look forward to. You don't have to buy custom window treatments in person because Blinds.com invented a better way. Blinds.com is 100% online. There's no showroom markups or waiting hours for quotes from pushy salespeople. A Blinds.com designer helped me pick the perfect style for free. And Blinds.com shipped free samples right to my door. You can DIY or book a pro like I did with just one click. Best of all, everything's covered with the Blinds.com 100% satisfaction guarantee. Shop Blinds.com for 40% off site-wide. Rules and restrictions may apply. Okay, food and drink recommendations this month. What are y'all looking forward to eating? First up is always coffee for me. Of course, and, it's yeah. a beverage. Yes. It's going to be a beverage there for <laughs> <Yeah>. Sophia. <laughs> well, we got to start our day with coffee anyways. So this is a great way <laughs> to get yeah, into are that. The specific threesome are like devotees of caffeine in the morning. <laughs> oh, absolutely. How else do you think we get this job done? <laughs> True. <laughs> and um, I'm kind of stealing Francesca's spot here, but Commonplace Coffee has this uh, special. It's an orange and basil latte. This is at all of their locations. I tried this with oat milk earlier this week and it was really good definitely more orangey than basil to me you get like a little bit of a basil aftertaste i think but this is probably one of my favorite coffee specials i've had at commonplace uh sophia first of all commonplace is everybody's spot that's why it's <laughs> called commonplace it's for the common folk <laughs> um and that sounds amazing i i will definitely have to try that out any other bevies you've got your eye on yes yeah you're always the source I have recently become obsessed with Delaney's. It's okay. in the South Side Flats. I even went twice in one weekend, and I need to cross a river to get there. So I feel oh, like that's wow. a really strong endorsement. I <laughs> am shocked by that, especially this time of year. I almost slipped on ice uh, on the way to get my second drink, but I did it. I made it through. Oh, um, I haven't been there in a long time. I used to really dig their lattes. Um, they had a ton of baked goods at the time. I think they were getting some of them from maybe 350 Bakery and then some other places. Um, I, executive producer Mary Lee uh, used to work in the neighborhood as well. Um, her biggest tip is to get their bagels if they have them. I've never had that. I haven't either. You know, I'm very worried about bagels, not from my favorite uh, hometown bagel shop in New Jersey, but maybe <laughs> I'll try them. So, Sophia, you're such a snob about like traditionally New York, New Jersey foods. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like you that's valid. <laughs> but I will say it smelled really good in there. Their sandwich descriptions looked amazing. Um, food wise, honestly, the thing that intrigues me the most is like a Belgian waffle, though. I love sweets. Ooh. 
Um, also, don't sleep on their juices, their canned drinks. Um, there's just always like a lot of interesting choices. Uh, I also just love that they have so much art on the walls. Um, a lot of it's for sale. Uh, and they've got this little upstairs seating area that's super cute. It's just a fun place to be and spend a couple hours. And they also posted some specials on Instagram a few days ago, and I am so excited to see a lavender orchid matcha. I also feel like oh. this could be up both your alleys, too. Um, I think this was maybe also a special for February. I think I saw something like crossed out when I went. Uh, so I had assumed they ran out of it, but I need to go back and try this drink. It sounds so fun. See, I knew you'd have the good picks. I really got to <laughs> go back there. I've only been there once, surprisingly. Um, and this is kind of a fun memory. It was actually after the first time I met you, Megan. Uh, Wait, really? Way, yeah, way back uh, on my first appearance on The Confluence when you were working at WESA. Mm -hmm. I stopped yep. there for lunch and a coffee. And um, wow, what what a, what a little memory you've uncovered for me, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. And look at you now on mic all the time. Um, well, what if we want like a treat with our coffee? Can we get some food with the beverage this month? Of course. Uh, well, this isn't for the full month of March, but I just want to make this known for folks. Um, if you didn't get your punchki yet, uh, obviously really popular before Mardi Gras, there's a few spots that you can still have them until St. Patrick's Day, Bethel Bakery in Bethel Park and Oakmont Bakery in Oakmont, of course. <laughs> Francesca did a fantastic little roundup of good punchki locations. Um, it's on our website, uh, so you can find it at pittsburgh.citycast.fm. Yeah. But since we're in the middle of Lent season, um, go back and check out our podcast about the ultimate fish fry map. That was so cool. Um, mm -hmm. One I'm kind of curious about, because honestly, I don't eat fish, um, is the Katatui Vegan Fishless Fry. Um, they're a nonprofit food truck, and they're out in Edgewood every Friday during Lent. It just looked so interesting. I, I would love to try that. Francesca, you must really want it if you're willing to cross a bridge in most of the city to get to a fishless fry. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I make it. Um, a friend of mine right, recently recommended St. Mary's on the Mount. Um, so that's that like gorgeous brick church you can see on Grandview oh, Avenue. Yeah. Um, I've never been there for fish fry. It never even occurred to me to go, but um, she said that it's really good. Uh, also, um, speaking of the confluence, I actually want to shout out Saints Martha and Mary uh, Parish in Hampton Township. Um, the former host of the confluence, Kevin Gavin, uh, who's been on our show, friend of the pod, um, he is the head fish fryer over there. And I can confirm that the food is fantastic. Um, the fish is great, obviously, but don't sleep on the cookies. They're very good. Ooh, love a cookie Ooh. table. And yes. they have homemade pierogi, so they would fit the fish fry map filter Ooh, from, yes. last, from last Absolutely week. adding that one to my list then. But wait, <laughs> back up. Now that Francesca's brought up St. Patty's Day, I want to hear what you're planning, Megan, because I know you've had some fun St. Patrick's Day experiences in the past. Yes, I was really into the St. Patrick's of it all in, in my ill-spent youth. Um, it's a special <laughs> season in Pittsburgh. Um, I think my favorite part, honestly, is not actually St. Patrick's Day, um, but something called St. Practice Day. Uh, if you've ever been down on the south side the weekend before St. Patrick's and the parade, um, it's wild. People are bouncing from bar to bar at like earlier and earlier hours, it seems like every year, uh, <laughs> covered in the regalia. It's just, it's a lot of fun. We'll talk more about like the particulars of all of that um, next week in our food show. That is so Pittsburgh. Like, if, <laughs> that's such a Pittsburgh culture thing. Um, yes, we love a drinking holiday or a holiday we can turn into a drinking holiday. Yes, absolutely. And that's many. That's very many. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, speaking of that, uh, Drinking holidays aren't usually my speed, but I have to share this fun St. Patrick's Day event um, that I found. First of all, have you guys seen the Berg bus? It's kind of no. hard to miss. Only, yeah. only pictures, <laughs> not in real life, but I okay. want to. Yeah. So for folks who don't know, it's an old school bus. It's decked out in black and gold and all kinds of fun Yinzer drawings like landmarks and, you know, icons of Pittsburgh. They do tours of Pittsburgh and improv and stand-up comedy on the bus. I've even seen them do drag before, so that's pretty cool. Nice. Um, and the Berg bus is doing something called the Leprechaun Loop, and it's five hours and three breweries and one epic afternoon, they're calling it. Uh, so they're stopping at Inner Groove, East End Brewing, and Back Alley Brewing. Um, so, you know, you don't have to drive. You can load up in the bus, have a good time, and pop around, pop around Pittsburgh. Francesca, what day is that? That's on March 16th. 
So same day as the parade. Yep. Um, the parade, if you've never been, is huge here in Pittsburgh. Uh, they claim to be one of the largest in the U.S. Um, I think it starts at 10 a.m. downtown. So that'll be Saturday, March 16th. I can do that math. <laughs> uh, but we'll have more about the parade, our pro tips from having gone, um, how to have a safe St. Practice Day, where to get Irish food. We'll have it all rounded up for you next week. And just to wrap up on uh, something that you can do all months, not tied to any holiday, Francesca, I know you've got more food recs and openings coming in hot tomorrow, but is there any one place, cuisine, dish, anything that you're excited to try this coming month? Good question. (laughs) Um, I still haven't been to the Essence Cafe in the South Side. I guess we're sticking to the South Side today. We were at Delaney's earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) um, It opened last year, um, you know, when we were mourning the losses of other vegetarian and vegan places, B-52 and Onion Maiden. Um, But it blends seasonal and local ingredients with African flavors. Uh, So I really want to check this out. The cauliflower curry sounds really good right now. I feel like I've been seeing that more on menus lately. It sounds really good. Like I've I've liked it everywhere I've tried it. Yeah, it everything looks amazing. Like go look at the pictures, check it out. Um, I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this on the show before, but I think my answer is I really want to like make this the month for the revolving sushi bar. I think this oh, is yeah. the time. Okay, good. I'm excited to hear your review. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sophia? I think it's finally about time I go to Tana Ethiopian Cuisine. It's um, That's been on your list for a while. Oh, yeah. I know. It's right <laughs> next to my boxing gym. Uh, so I keep saying, like, I'll go there later. Um, but I think this is the month I'm finally going to do it. And I really want Tej. It's this honey wine that is so sweet and so yummy. We got another day of NBA action. And with FanDuel, every night is a watch party. So it's time for your FanDuel crew to make their bets. So, what's the move tonight, gang? You know the new customers who bet $5 get $150 back in bonus bets if you win. Woohoo! We're heating up, fam. Bet all the stars with all your friends and make every moment more only on FanDuel. New customers bet $5, get $150 back in bonus bets if you win. Make every moment more with FanDuel. It goes down in the deal. It go down. It go down in the deal. 21 plus and present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. So last up, some fun events coming up to mark your calendar for. Get me out of hibernation. (laughs) It is your time. So what's up first? Yes. So I think um, our trusted leader, Mary Lee, put these in date order for us. So thank you so much for that work behind the scenes. Um, First on the list is the Pittsburgh Home and Garden Show. Um, So it's at the convention center downtown. It's going to be March 8th through the 17th this year. Um, So it's always a nice long window for folks to pop in and check it out. Okay, I have no idea what happens at a home and garden show. Please enlighten me. (laughs) It's a pretty big deal, honestly. I think a lot of people plan um, their projects for spring by going to these uh, these sort of uh, big shows. The website says it's a um, the largest home event in America. Uh, That seems a little hard to fact check. So, (laughs) grain of salt on that one. But yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, I used to get free tickets um, to this, uh, and I loved it every time I could uh, weasel my way in there. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. It is like kind of like a trade show, um, but stuff for your home, um, which is great if you have like a project already in mind. Like if you know you want to renovate your kitchen, but you're not sure like a company or where to go or what type of materials, you can like check out a ton of stuff all at once. Um, or like the one that I saw a ton of the couple of years ago when I went is the the flooring now that you can get for your garage like if you want to make a fancy garage um like there's like the spongy kinds that like are easy to clean and look really pretty um but you can also like demo stuff maybe that you're interested in adding to your home it's interesting i've been more as a renter than i ever did as a homeowner and uh it was like cool to like kind of window shop a little bit and see like what i might look for in a home someday ah the same reason why i watch house hunters and also to psychoanalyze people relationships. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm poking around on their website now. There's a pets at home aisle. Ah, oh, that sounds so fun. Ah, <laughs> uh, me too. I'm looking and there's a Steel City Lego Creations thing that's there. Oh, uh, that's made for you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm assuming people aren't really there for pets and Legos, but that's what's selling me as a renter. Yeah, there's just so much interesting stuff. I also just want to shout out, I don't know who organizes it anymore because the same guy here in Pittsburgh did it for the longest time um, and he passed away not too long ago, I think in 2022. Um, his name was John DeSantis and he was a really like prominent preservationist and historian, oh. especially on homes on the north side. So um, whoever is doing this work now um, is really doing like they've picked up a big mantle because it was really his baby for a very long time. Carrying on the tradition. Pittsburgh way. Um, Francesca, what's an event that you've got on your calendar this month? I am hoping to go to the Pittsburgh Sticker Fair. This is the first time it's happening. It's at Workshop PGH. This is at their warehouse location in Wilkinsburg. Guys, I love local stickers. I don't know what it is. It's like the same feeling I have when I go into Wildcard in Lawrenceville and I see all of the like beautiful <laughs> stationery. I love local stickers. And I just started making mine into magnets. Uh, so, I wondered oh. if you were going to be the kind of person. Do you hoard stickers? Do you actually use them? <laughs> it sounds like you do both by making them a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I um I don't have them on my water bottle because I have that type of anxiety where I can't <laughs> Same. I can't choose. commit. I won't put a sticker on anything. It's the surest way to know that whatever that device or object is will go missing from my life. I know. I same relatable. So anyways, I just got like flat pieces of magnets and stuck them on and cut them out with an exacto knife. And so I'm slowly uh you know transferring them over to my fridge, but I think it's a fun way to collect them. <laughs> um so that's on March 9th hoping to make it out to that. So, Sophia, what do you have going on this month? Yeah, one thing that looks super cool is the Japanese Film Fest at Row House Cinema. That's at their Lawrenceville location. And it seems like this is an event they do every spring. And this year, it's from March 15th to the 28th. Oh, that's so fun. Any movies in particular you're interested in, Sophia? I just want to watch more movies in general. So there's a bunch of genres, sci-fi, horror, comedy, animated movies. So I would check out anything. But based on title alone, the thing that caught my attention was Ninja vs. Shark. <laughs> I don't know if that one would be for me. Uh, please report back. I don't know anything <laughs> about it. I just saw Ninja vs. Shark and was like, yes, sure. Um, if you want to watch that or any of the other movies, you can buy a one-time movie ticket. Um, but if there's multiple films you want to check out, uh, Row House has weekly passes for $59, and that'll give you access to all of those movies and events that week. So, Megan, how about you? I think the one that I'm most piqued by is uh, Pittsburgh Arts and Lectures. Um, they have several like uh, annual rounds of programming, um, but one in particular is called 10 Evenings. Um, I just always think it's so neat. Yeah, they're really cool. Um, they really are. If you're not familiar, uh, they bring in authors to talk about like one of their books. Um, it can be a mix of things. Um, this series focuses on fiction and nonfiction, um, but they have others for like children's literature and poetry. Um, I actually moderated for them once and they oh, were just wow. like the sweetest folks behind the scenes. Um, and it was really cool to get to not only read the books, um, but also then speak to the human or listen to them as an audience member who did this like beautiful writing. It was just a really fun experience. And I've been an audience member way, way more than I was ever like, quote unquote, on stage. It was during the pandemic, so it was virtual, but it was still really fun. That's so cool, Megan. I didn't know that about you. I love that. And this is a good reminder for me to get tickets to the April lecture because that one's Ed Young. I've been following his reporting for years now. Um, speaking of the pandemic, he did really sobering reporting about COVID and long COVID for The Atlantic. But he's also done a lot of reporting about animals. And the book he's hmm. going to be talking about is An Immense World, which is about how animals like sense things differently. Ooh. And I love animal facts, but I am getting <laughs> ahead of myself. Who is coming in March? <laughs> Francesca, I, I know you've got it pulled up. Who, who's next on deck? Yes, on March 25th, Tracy Kidder will be here talking about his book, Rough Sleepers. Yeah, so looking at the description of this book... Kidder spent five years following the work of Dr. Jim O'Connell and the Boston Healthcare for the Homeless. Uh, wow, this looks really neat. It's uh, going to be like a Q&A with him as well. Yes. And bonus, it'll be at the Carnegie Music Hall, which is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I haven't been there, but I guess I'll see it in April. <laughs> 
Yes. I've got so many more March events to share in the Hey Pittsburgh newsletter and on our website. Um, there's the Neighborhood Flea Market, the 8th Annual Brouhaha, an adult spelling bee. Whoa. So many fun things. Uh, make sure you're subscribed at pittsburgh.citycast.fm. Well, thanks, Jens. Appreciate the tips. Of course. So happy to be here with you both. Happy March. Bye. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you're liking the show, we hope you will tell someone. Um, I know I still find all of my favorite podcasts because someone told me to look for it. Um, Leave us a review. Make sure you're subscribed to our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter uh, and look for us tomorrow. We will be back with more news from around the city. Talk to you soon. Uh, My male guy is on foot. He probably has great calves.